And with that being said, I'm going to get our first panelist introduced. So Roger, let's get started with you. Hey guys, good afternoon. Roger Jennings, um, Lima One Capital. I am the Director of Valuations and work in the private money non-QM space. Great to be here. Katie? Hi everyone, my name is Katie John. I'm the Director of Appraisal Management at NP Inc. Um, I am over our appraisal department uh, for our retail, wholesale, and non-QM side. Cool, and hi, hi everybody. This is Keenan Chen. I am the EVP of Corporate Strategy for Clear Capital and uh, over uh, our strategic relationships as well. Happy to uh, uh, be on the panel. Thanks. Hi, guys. Uh, this is Akhil Ahmed. I'm SVP Operations at ValueLink Software. Appreciate all the panelists joining in. So appreciate the partnership and uh, looking forward to this. Great. Thanks, everyone. So on the agenda today, we're going to go over some three topics, um, industry, market, and technology. And as a reminder, if you do have a question, we're more than happy to answer them. Just use the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen to submit it. And to get the conversations going, I'm going to hand it over to Rhonda. Thanks, Bridgel. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, I know we're eager to get to the questions, so let's just dive right in with uh, top of mind. So first, um, I want to say there is this perception that the industry is shrinking and we see it. We see it with consolidation activity, with divesting, reduction in staff. So um, companies like yours have been able to stay competitive in this market and profitable. So Katie, we'll start with you. Do you agree that with this perception and what adjustments have you made to stay successful in the market of rising interest rates and low inventory? Absolutely. Great question. I think what we're seeing in the industry right now isn't necessarily new to anyone in lending, right? We've seen interest rates rise before. We've seen uh, potential applicants and, and, and borrowers, you know, question whether or not this is the right time for them to start their journey of home ownership. Um, what's been really fantastic uh, during this time is the amount of, of innovation that this time has, has really brought to the industry. You know, here at NP, we have a really strong and unique relationship with an insurance company that gives NP the ability to sell product at a more competitive rate and guaranteed forward commitment. That coupled with NP's very diverse loan programs uh, to be able to service more borrowers and the appraisal modernization movement that we're seeing with programs such as the Freddie ACE plus PDR program. That's really helped NP Inc. stay competitive and helped more borrowers achieve that dream of home ownership. Great, great feedback, great insight. Roger, what about you? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, speaking specifically to the non-QM space, for Lima One, you know, directly, I can say it's the diversification, right? So the product offerings and as a non-QM or private money lender offering new construction to fix and flip to long-term, right, is critical, especially now um, with our space becoming even more competitive, right? It's not just the volume that we contend with, it's also the products that we're, that we're able to offer, right? So, you know, I think Lima One's best known for customer service and, you know, we, we truly go above and beyond, but without the products and the product offerings, right, the borrowers aren't looking your direction or opening those doors. So, you know, it's such a strange time in industry, you know, to Katie's point, you're right, like the conventional side, we're used to the roller coaster. What comes up has always come down um, and, and always will. And I think we'll see the same on the private money side, you know, but with the private money growth and the non-QM growth, being as substantial as it's been, you know, it's leaving companies like Lima One a huge, huge opportunity um, to offer that customer service and, and products that haven't been offered before, right? Exceed those those bars where the conventional world has been there and is in place for such a long time. You know, I think it on the non-QM side, it, it leaves a lot more excitement in place because so much is new and growing and, and rapid. 
So Kenan, I see you nodding your head. Did you have anything you wanted to add before I move on to the next question? Yeah, no, I, I love that that perspective that that um, that Roger and Katie have. Um, you know, while certainly we see some headwinds um, uh, that are impacting, um, you know, maybe the, the the number of of loans that are that are happening or, or the interest, but where we're seeing expansion is is a number of different types of products that are being offered, and and the and the demands that are that are on you know companies like us is to stay innovative and and ensure that you know the products that we have um match the experience that lenders want to create you know with those with those new loan products um and uh and and so it's it's driving us forward you know even in the midst of headwinds i feel like it's it, it's a time where where the industry is is looking to the future more instead of just trying to keep up with uh, overwhelming, you know, demand and, and volume. So, so those are, those are positive things, you know, moving out, you know, through the rest of this year. Thank you. I see you nodding as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would definitely echo the sentiments here of our panelists. Uh, I mean, it's definitely a changing market. Interest rates are high, you know, there's market margin compression, but it also gives you an opportunity to understand and ask questions for yourself that how are we prepared? How is an institution prepared to handle this market and navigate today's market? So it's an important um, you know, benchmark to understand and see how we can improve our technology and gives you an opportunity as well to kind of dissect every part of the process and see how we can optimize and take advantage of uh, you know, this time. Roger, like mentioned, about different product offering, you know, there's uh, an uptake in the purchase market. While you know you, you're looking into options for HELOCs and uh, different manufactured homes and different products, so it's a great opportunity to also uh, look at your tech stack, understand how it is, and how you can make it better to to take benefits of this time that we're in. All right. Well, let's move on to the next question. Let's talk about the GSC regulations and new products. So it's really great to see the GSEs pushing for modernization, right? Um, but uh, lenders, obviously, they want faster close time. Uh, they want reduced cost. But majority of the people want to pivot but haven't either made the move yet, they don't know enough, or they have. they know about it but they have not made the business decision. So Keenan, I'm gonna kick this one to you first. I like this question. Do people stay true to what they've been doing or embrace the GSE appraisal modernization movement? Well, it's, I mean, it's something that people in the industry, you know, talk about a lot, which is, you know, kind of the feast and famine mentality. Like when, when there's so much to do and it's so busy, no one has the time to implement something new. And then, you know, when we, we have a downturn, you know, you know, perhaps it's difficult as well to to, to invest in 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 uh, in change, and especially right now where you know every every loan is precious, right? Every single opportunity is precious, and understandably, um, um, some folks are are um, nervous to make a change that might kill that precious deal, or you know, that's something that's that they're not um, used to. But I, I think some things that we we learned here is that number one. Um, uh, that the GSEs are committed to appraisal modernization, not just as a means to solve a capacity issue like we saw, you know, with with last year. They're looking over the long term and seeing that this is the direction that appraisals needs to go. Um, appraisals have been lagging um, in innovation, lagging in keeping up with the digitization movement uh, within mortgage. Um, and have been uh, behind, and so the 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 need is that um, that appraisals become um, uh, more transparent, more accurate, um, uh, and and more flexible based on risk to meet the demands of of today's you know mortgage products. So um, you know I, I I think that ultimately I think people are realizing that like oh this is not just a knee jerk reaction to the pandemic, it's not just a knee jerk reaction to um, the, the record year that we had last year, this is actually the roadmap of where Fannie, Fannie and Freddie are heading um, to ensure that appraisal um, meets, meets the demands of, uh, of, of, of home, homeowners and, and home buyers and, and reduces the risk of, of bias 
um, and, and, and ensures that there's a, an equitable approach um, to valuation across the country. Very good point, um, particularly in terms of, you know, the GSEs being committed to this end. Um, Want to open it up for other panelists to weigh in as well. Any thoughts? Roger? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, th there's so much within that question that, that rattles through my mind, right? First is, you know, the slowdown o over time and historically, you see the success on the lending side. And, you know, speaking specifically for non-QM, right, we stay so busy, you know, through the increase that it really does, it's, it feels like a, a year of reaction, right? You come out the other side sweaty, and, you know, I feel like we just ran that, you know, that crazy marathon that at the end, the guy's throwing water on himself and cheering, right? So, you know, but the truth is, as things slow down, the best of the best fine tune their process, right? And that's why they're the best. So as things modernize, I, you know, the modernization on the GSE side also happens on the non-QM side, and maybe even more, right, because of the abilities that we have, right? The private money side is more flexible than the GSE side. So ultimately, as the slowdown's begun, now you sharpen your tools. Now that technology pieces that you, you know, fine-tuning your process around your appraisal technology, the appraisals that you offer, right, the, you know, the hybrid that's been an ongoing discussion for two years now, right, I mean, all of these things play such a big role in what happens next and your survival, really, right, so we're, you know, speaking, you know, specifically to just Lima, we're seeing increases month over month since the slowdown, right, um, just because of the side of the house that we're on. And like all mortgage, we're going to see up and down on both sides. But right now, we have the ability to capitalize and increase our volume um, due to the product offerings and the market that we target, right? So investors are still there. We still have a, house, a housing shortage. And with the opportunity to use these new products, tools, and features and systems, I mean, you really, really can make um, – a, a strong, solid impact, and, and I think that's what you're seeing, and not only Lima, but quite a few private money lenders. Yeah, very insightful. Uh, I'm going to probe a little bit more on that, Roger, when we get to the market segment, um, but on to the, the next question. So, um, and Keenan, I'm not trying to pick on you, but I'm going to uh, pose this one back to you first. So, there's industry talk about Freddie's ACE plus PDR product. What is it? When is it available? What steps do lenders need to take to include Freddie's product suite? So what's your perspective on that? Um, well, first of all, you, you you always take the opportunity to pick on me. So I'm sure <laughs> about that last statement. So um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's been a couple of noticeable or, or, or notable, you know, policy changes this year, right? So um, you know, desktop appraisals, you know, went um, into policy for both the GSEs in March. And then and then the next, you know, kind of major policy changes, um, Freddie Mac on July 17th made their ACE, ACE plus PDR um, product um, available. And, and really what that is, it's, it's another form of appraisal waiver. So, you know, everyone loves appraisal waivers, right? Like no appraisal, yay. You know, like people get it's, it's the only thing about appraisal people get really excited about, right? It's, I don't have to get one. Um, but <laughs> but this is another flavor of that where it, it's a waiver, but there's also a in, inspection component or property data report um, that comes with that. The, the good news there is that it, it provides a in-between option in between a, um, a, a full waiver and then a traditional appraisal process. So, so now a property data report um, there's there's additional workforces that can provide provide a property data report. Um, uh, uh, non appraisers such as you know, real estate agents and um, um, folks that are trained and certified to use a technology based approach, you know, a mobile app to gather the data um, that meets Freddie Mac standards um, to to support that decision. And and so you get kind of the best of both worlds. You get kind of the speed of the waiver, but then you get the 
um, information about the property, the condition, detailed understanding of, of what the property is um, uh, for, for confidence there, right? You know, from an underwriting perspective. And, and then um, the way that, that Freddie Mac has set it up is that um, uh, if, if there's um, issues with the property that come back in the property data report, you know, for instance, if the condition rating is a C5 or C6, that there's a process by which you can um, not have to start over again <laughs> um, with the traditional appraisal, but you can um, uh, uh, escalate to a, a hybrid appraisal and you can get a completion report as well if, if the property is, is repaired and, and you can do an update there. So, so it, it keeps you in the process as well um, instead of kicking you out, um, which should give people some confidence, right, to go down this path and, and not worry as much about, oh no, like, what if I get that down here and I, I stop and I have to start over again? They, they've kind of thought about that in, in the workflow. Um, so I, the way that you take advantage of it is through the same you know, automated underwriting system that you work with with Freddie now through, through LPA um, to understand whether it's eligible or not. Good deal. Um, so uh, we're going to wrap up and switch gears and move on to our next segment, which is the market. I know we're inundated every day what news about what's going on in, in the market. So I'm really excited about this segment to, to get the perspective of our, of our panelists. So rapidly evolving industry changes and unpredictability are outside of the realm of our control, but there are levers that we can pull and things that are within our control. So Roger, I'm gonna pick on you now. While market shares with lenders, how can others diversify portfolios and add non-QM and loan types to bolster revenue? Well, you know, it's a tough question, and even even preparing for the questions, you have you have questions that really are tough. Um, but the truth is, I mean, I think you're going to always on the non-QM side. It's very hard to speak unilaterally or universally. Like everybody has. So, from a Lima perspective, we are obviously owned by MFA. You have Blackstone in the game, among many other big ones, right? So our restrictions are directly associated to our ownership, right, and where our money is associated, right? So for us, we had to find what was acceptable within our threshold. So when I spoke to the hybrid a moment ago, you know, opening that product wasn't just about saying, you know, hey, we're going to offer the hybrid. We found a hybrid provider we like we're moving forward, right? It was about digging in and confirming that we could we could still keep our risk similar to what we were what we had before, right? So it wasn't just a hybrid, it was a hybrid plus the right appraisal software, right? So for us implementing value lane, hiring staff appraisers, right? Us being able to diversify came from reducing the risk from a different approach, right? So we opened additional products, we opened additional appraisal products, and ultimately offset that risk with the right platform, with the right AMC providers, with the right appraisers, right? So for us, I know conventional or GSC world works much, much different, but for us, I can say specifically, that was probably the key factor. Well, I'd like to hear from our other panelists on that topic. What about you, Katie? Any thoughts? Yeah, so I, I think Roger makes a fantastic point about uh, making sure you have the right technology partner, be it uh, your order management system or your vendor partners, your AMCs, right? Um, so NP, we work directly with appraisers. We actually, we, we, we cut down on how many AMCs that we work with, but when we do partner up with an AMC like Clear Capital, right, we want to make sure that they, as well as our order management platform, which uh, no surprise, is value link, right? We want to make sure that they also have their eye on uh, what the industry is going to do moving forward, right? You don't want to get stuck in, that, stuck in that rut where you know where you need to grow as a company, you know where you're going to pivot, but your technology providers can't do that. And so that's a really great point that Roger makes is making sure that those technology providers, be it if they're your vendors or your order management platform, 
are aligned with your overall go goals as well as excuse me as well as overall uh in, in in really embarking on this appraisal modernization journey Akil, i see you nod anything you want to add to that yeah absolutely and i think change is never easy right it's uh we, but we all moved from DVDs to Netflix, right? So having, you know, you know, moving from different times to time, right? With different markets, you have to be ready and be prepared. So we should all be looking for partners that can tie in and support our productivity goals. Um, partners like Clear Capital, Lima One, you know, if we are doing a matchmaking exercise, um, you know, we're providing the best in class solutions. So all of us can benefit from that in providing those different products and supporting those uh, through our technology you know, workflow options. And that is what I think um, you know, differentiates uh, you know, uh, clients and of course providers like us who can really hone in on the needs of the clients and provide them solutions that will you know, make them thrive in, even in this market. So, yeah. Thanks. Um, very insightful. There's a growing theme. If you nod your head, I'm going to call on you. So just heads up. <laughs> well, we're going to keep it here with the kill um, on the next question. So um, it's it, it's important for fintechs and other technology providers to work together to meet the needs of lenders right across the industry. So Akil, with you, what's the importance of seamlessly connecting lenders with the right technology partners to improve borrower experience and drive growth in this market? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's crucial for a loan cycle to be as seamless and touchless as possible. So any technology partner that you partner up with, uh, you know, they should have robust APIs that can connect your loan origination system with your vendors like appraisers or AMCs like Roger and um, Katie mentioned. So it's important to have that <clears throat> seamless connectivity with all the providers so eventually the bars that we all serve, they get a great experience out of it. You know, we all think, why do we do this, right? Why do we build these technology and why do we build these automation and components? And I think the end goal is to make sure that the bars that we all serve, they are having a great experience working with lenders like, you know, uh, Lima One and NP Inc. So it's crucial to have the close-knit API integrations and providing workflow that is uh, providing top-notch experience for the borrowers that we all eventually serve. Katie, I see you have your hand raised. What are your thoughts? Oh, I was just going to say the other aspect of that when it comes to finding the right technology partner and something that ValueLink has been fantastic about is, is we all know that we have to focus on does the value link system connect to our LOS or is it something that we can easily train on? But one of the things that have been fantastic is the borrower facing side of working with the right technology partner, knowing that when your technology partner does have to send out some type of notification to the end consumer, right? The borrower, that it's clear, it makes sense. It's not startling to that person who may be going through their first home buying experience and may not know all the moving parts yet or may have been addressed by by their loan officer is to, hey, you should expect this to, you know, hit your inbox here soon. But in a world of phishing scams and everything else that we have to battle in our industry, right? Knowing that your technology partner is going to have everything laid out very clearly. So that way that end consumer experience, not just the business to business experience, but the end, co end consumer experience for the borrower is top notch. And that's something that ValueLink has been phenomenal about. Everything can be um, low, put you can put logos on it as necessary to make sure that that end user that's receiving that, whomever that may be, appraisers, borrowers, um, you know, other teammates internally know exactly what it is, where it's coming from, and how to execute on what they're being asked for. Nice. And I know um, I do want to get to the Q and A section towards the end so that our viewing audience will have a chance to put our panelists in the hot seat. Um, but we're gonna wrap up for market and switch gears a little, little bit and, and move right into the technology piece. So, um, you know, lenders are aware of the benefits and the role of technology to future ready their business and where to begin and getting started, right? Are common challenges given, you know, the, the challenges of integrating new solutions into existing workflows or new technologies into 
uh, legacy system. So uh, Roger, I'm gonna pose this one back to you. How has Lima One addressed these issues and how have you been able to make progress in the form of relying on new technology to meet specific business goals, to achieve revenue growth and reduce cycle times? Yeah, so for uh, for us, this has been huge, um, and you know, I just wanted to say, if you don't, if you've been through a poor technology experience with a appraisal platform provider, then you know how critically important it is, right? Uh, unfortunately, um, you know, my mom said I was hard headed, and and I guess I am because I've been through that cycle um, and had to learn the hard way what platform not to use. Um, but the truth is, you know, for us in, in connecting with Value Link, I mean, we've we've grown substantially. You know, just giving you pure numbers in the last year and a half, we've gone from 22 business days, and I, and I understand how dramatic this is. I would probably think I was making this up, but it's just the truth. Um, 22 business days to 8.4, I think, as of this morning, to wow. get uh, completely accurate on holistic turn times, and that since partnering up with uh, Akil and Value Link, bringing on an appraisal team, I mean, there's so many factors that go into that, and so much work, and, you know, so many pieces that have to tie in, but at the end of the day, it's absolutely critical and, and part of growth, right? If you can't provide it quicker, faster, and better than the next guy, I mean, especially in the non-QM world, these investors, they're, they're on to the next place, right? As I would be as an investor, right? If I have 100 properties, that's that's a lot of money to trust with somebody, right? So I'm going to find the person who's going to provide it best. And over time, it doesn't take long to find out which one is the best, right? So from a customer-facing internal, I mean, all the way down the line, I mean, you truly have to, if you don't have the technology built in, just you're not going to keep up it's just the simple, it's the simple truth of it yeah no i do want to take a deeper dive into the technology piece um but keenan do you have anything to add on that note yeah akil got me got me thinking with that netflix statement on dvds versus uh, uh streaming and and so now i'm going to go off script um <laughs> net, netflix just you know they they put out a, a little a little ask to people that still had hung on to their their DVDs to like take pictures of the DVDs they never returned back to Netflix and 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 post those and I I was thinking about that like you know nostalgia for legacy tech is is cool you know but it's not a great way to run your business like right now if you want to provide a good experience and I, I think you know when you think about order management systems you know, you know, legacy systems that have not uh, adapted to be able to offer automated workflow and easy API integration and 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 uh, and be ready for what's coming next with a risk based approach to appraisal right not just a, a one one size fits all approach but um, but different options based on different situations. Um, uh, that's going to be crucial to be competitive as, as a as a lender, I think, moving forward and, and offering um uh, a great you know a great borrower experience and and offering certainty right because I, I think a lot of this is not just about how fast you're getting back a product but um it, it's about being able to communicate with certainty to the client this is what to expect and this is why you should stay here in you know um in this existing relationship rather than shopping and, and going out and looking for other things because you're not exactly sure what's going to happen and and uh, and that's the exciting part to me about modernization is that it, it provides certainty and transparency. Um, and as as a lender, you need technology that actually lets you take advantage of that and implement it. So, um, so thanks for the Netflix reference, Akil. <laughs> no, so I want to probe that a little bit more. So you mentioned risk based approach. So are you referencing like? different loan types and complexities of the property. Can you give more insight into your vision on the risk-based approach? Yeah, I, mean, I think we've got a, a slide for that, you know, coming up in a bit, but, um, you know, it, essentially it's that, you know, not every property is the same and uh, not every 
um, uh, loan decision is the same, right? And so, you know, um, as we move more towards a world where, where we have more of a digitized understanding of properties, um, uh, that means that we can, we can uh, 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 use different uh, methods of, of appraisal um, to get comfortable with what's happening at that property and comfortable with the value. Um, that doesn't always mean sending out someone to the property, you know, and, and, uh, and, and trying to, you know, sort of start from scratch every time, you know, there's, there's a, you know, as, as data becomes standardized and digitized, um, we can start from what we already know and accelerate the rest of the process. So I'll, I'll talk more about kind of the different options, at least that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have been pretty clear about where they're headed um, from a risk standpoint. Okay. All right. I'll come back to you on that. Um, we'll move on to the next question. I think we just have a couple more and we'll get to our viewing audience. So um, Katie, I, I want to hear from you on this one, but how can lenders, fintechs, and order management systems and others simplify workflows for new products like desktop and your ACE plus PDR? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the the short answer is, and kind of the running theme of this conversation, right, is have the right technology partners in place. Make sure if you know as a company where you want to go with utilizing those products, right, make sure that's one of the first questions to your to your vendors, to your technology partners, right? If if the answer is no, especially at this day and age, right, that they are they don't have that on their roadmap or that roadmap is much farther out than where you want to have that implemented as a business, I think at this point that's not really acceptable. Uh, anymore. And you should be looking to uh, the industry leaders like ValueLink, like Clear Capital to make sure that they can be implemented in some way, shape, or form so that way you can keep your business growing and taking advantage of these new these new uh, opportunities and the new workflows. I know that uh, coming from the, my previous my previous years in the industry on the AMC side, you know, I've heard all the things about what's coming in the pipeline, but knowing that when it got time to talk about those new offerings as new uh, GSE regulations were rolling down, you get that hiccup of, oh, you can't, you can't quite pitch that yet, or we're not there yet, we're 90, 120 days out or more. At a certain point, that doesn't become acceptable, and now we're, we're at that point, right? So I think that main thing is, 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 that running theme that we have here is getting the right technology partners in place that have that on their roadmap today or are able to actualize that on, on, on that today. So that way you can start serving more borrowers. No, yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good perspective, like pushing back on your technology partners and holding them accountable um, to, to helping you and aiding you in meeting your specific business goals. Um, I like that. Um, Roger, anything to add? And then we'll get to you, Akil. Yeah, you know, I was just going to say from the lender side too, you know, even past that, the the pitches or the sales pitch, if you will, for a lot of these platforms have gotten, are, are impressive, right? I, I've used quite a few and, and talked to even more platforms over the years. And the truth is you, you see these, you know, these sales pitch and you hear, you know, open API everywhere these days, right? And it all sounds good and it looks good, but as a lender, you know, I can't stress enough, do the diligence, right? Put in the time, confirm the integrations, right? You know, uh, maybe it's foolish of me, I'm, I'm, I don't speak IT, but, you know, the simple truth is I have assumed starting down this road that if an integration was built, that it was built, right? So it just worked with whatever system it was integrated with, and that was that, right? When the truth is, there's so much more to it than that, right? The integration into our LOS is great, but the customization needed in order for Lima to, to maximize its efficiency is something totally different, right? So I would just add, you know, really, really get in there as you do decide your technology and make sure that you're asking that, the right questions and even beyond that, testing what's, what, what you're being told and what you're being shown in the sales pitch. All right, Akil? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's about knowing the users, knowing your internal processes. And like Roger mentioned, asking the right question, uh, questions with your technology provider. Um, I'm reading this book. Um, it's called Clarity Wins. It's by Steve Woodruff. It was recommended by an industry partner and uh, colleague. 
and it says that we all tune in to an FM radio station called WIIFM. So what's in it for me, right? So understanding that thought process, understanding my technology partners, if they can help me grow, understanding the services they offer and ask tough questions on, yeah, you're offering an API integration, but how it actually works and impacts my users and end users. So same for the desktop and ACE and PDR products. So really choosing the right partner, which can really offer an end-to-end -end solution instead of certain pieces of the product. And while still coming back and you know trying to fill missing pieces and eventually not rolling out with the technology that is a must, right, in coming in the future. So it's important to ask those right questions, understanding what's in, in it for me, and then choosing the right partner, um, e even with your appraisal process with other products that you have in your ecosystem. Yeah, so Roger talked about being able to, um, his accomplishment of reducing his cycle time from 22 days to eight days, which is pretty compelling and powerful, uh, I might add. But you know, having the right technology partner to do that, pushing back on your existing technology partner, holding them accountable. Um, and then so uh, I, I wanna sort of circle back to Keenan on this risk-based approach, right? Which sort of feeds into all of that, right? So what's the fastest path? So if we can move on to um, the next couple of slides and we can sort of get into the how-tos of that. So Akil, if you wanna start us out with talking about the automated workflows and then we'll, flow in, we'll, we'll move on to the risk-based approach. Absolutely. So this is a workflow tool that we developed with partnership of Lima One and of course, Clear Capital. And I must say with, without Clear Capital, this wouldn't work. Without the technology partner that we have, partnership we have with Clear Capital, this wouldn't work. So, so this workflow tool that we built out um, can automatically place certain number of orders, certain orders based on the risk, based on certain milestone, and this completely automates those follow-up valuation needs that a lender has. So this can be turned on for certain states, for certain products. Uh, so we, uh, Lima One uh, uses this for Clear Capital CDA products. And what it does is automatically orders those products. The users, they don't need to rekey the property details. They don't need to rekey data sets. They don't need to rekey or upload a appraisal report on the order that you know, is being used by Clear Capital for their CD analysis. So this is just a piece of the puzzle and uh, this automates the, that process um, and that brings down, you know, and that gives you a real ROI that brings down those turn times to, you know, from 20 to eight days. So this really impacts or this shows the impact the technology can have in achieving those targets and those goals and eventually your ROI. And, and again, I would reiterate, this wouldn't happen without the uh, partnership that we have with Clear Capital. So yeah, this is the automated tool. And uh, I'll just jump in here. I, you know, putting this in was remarkable. Uh, our securitization review turn time literally cut in half, if not better. Um, there are states like Florida where we're seeing returns at, at times the same day. Um, on our risk review, securitization review side, it, it's truly, truly impressive. And the fact that from a team member's perspective, I don't have to dedicate anyone to this task, right? So for the first few weeks, we ran validations to ensure that they were all ordering, obviously, right, and ordering the right way and worked back, you know, went back and forth with valuing clear capital and a kill. But I, I got to tell you, I'm I, I'm blown away at, at the results associated to this has been truly, truly incredible for us. So I, I can't I can't thank uh, Clear Capital and Value Link enough, really. This was a big change for us in the right direction. Yeah, this, this is something that we've really been looking for partners to help with for, for quite a quite a while, which is that, you know, we, we can't go any faster than you know, then when we actually receive the order. Um, but if if the ordering process isn't automated, then, you know, time is ticking before the order is even placed to us. And then often we have, uh, le you know, uh, lenders, you know, placing an order in a panic because they, they realize that they haven't, you know, uh, looked at the, the, the maximum time or the, or the, or the ultimate time to 
to place the order and that and time's gone by and now they're already against the clock you know when when we receive it and of course we do our best to rush the order and and get it back but but that ends up being you know costly and and stressful and all those things so having having you know value link upstream think about this come up with a solution um, that sets everybody up for success is um it's really a breath of of, of fresh air um but but more than that i think the, the people element you know the seeing the stress reduce <laughs> um, um from folks that that are already dealing with enough you know today um in in the market is that that makes me happy good deal i just want to acknowledge for one second i do see the questions coming in if you give us a few more minutes i promise we'll get to it uh, Bridgel, if you will, just move on to the next slide. I want to take a, a deeper dive into this risk-based approach. I know a lot of the questions are around, uh, you know, the vision of modern, what percentage. So, uh, Kanan, why don't you give us your, your vision and thoughts on this risk-based approach you talked about earlier? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we've been been partnered with the GSEs for, for a number of years now in, in bringing this, this vision to reality. And... Um, uh, and 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 really, the idea of monetization, right, is that you would continually introduce more and more technology, um, data, and and workflow to uh, to achieve the, the 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 fastest, most confident, you know, result um, uh, on a on a loan level basis. And um, and so, you know, as we introduce, you know. Um, uh, data um, where we, we work very hard to digitize as, as many U.S. properties as possible, that creates more opportunity for appraisal waivers, of course, and everyone loves those because that's zero time. Um, uh, and then we talked about the Freddie Mac Ace Plus PDR program as being a, an example of an appraisal waiver plus an inspection. Um, and so now, again, because we're dealing with a, a diverse workforce um, to, to, and, and they're using mobile technology um to deliver that inspection i mean we're seeing those can be turned you know in under three days and again i'm talking about average sort of turn times right now and then this is all of course changing as as we go um but you know that's pulling that closer to that zero days even with the appraisal waiver plus inspection um desktop appraisals haven't been you know on the market for too long in terms of the the most recent iter iteration but um you know but we're seeing those um uh, uh you know, be faster than than uh, than other types of of appraisals, and and when the data already exists or when it's easy to gain access to the property, um, we've been able to turn desktop appraisals in even less than two days. So um, so again, more upstream data like um, uh, things like uh, floor plans and um, uh, robust data in the in the MLS, uh, robust data in, in the listing process means that desktop appraisals can, can happen super fast as well. Um, and then hybrid appraisals um, uh, are, are still in test and learn um, from a GSC standpoint for, for some use cases, but, but this is really when there's a, a property data collection or inspection that's done by one person, and then the home is brought to the appraiser through uh, the delivery of that uh, property data report and the the uh, the data that was collected with technology, so now the appraiser at their desk can complete it. So so that's the the hybrid, and and you know throughout of course the past couple of years to now, I mean we've seen those beat out traditional appraisals, even with two people involved, beat out traditional appraisals by five days plus uh, on on average, and that time kind of keeps coming down. Well, we're even seeing that be able to also happen you know, as close to five days as possible. Um, and then we have traditional appraisal. So when you think about everything's kind of pulling up here towards the idea of, of a same day type um, appraisal, uh, a, a decision that's able to be made for a lender. Um, that's why I think um, uh, the industry is saying, you know, GSEs are saying, you know, but we could see a world and in, in, in which, in fact, I was talking with a, with a chief appraiser of a, of a, of a top 10 lender saying, I could see a world in, in, in a couple of years where only 10% of appraisals are traditional appraisals and the rest are some other form of, of alternative that, that, that yields 
uh, more consistent results. So th this is where it's going. This isn't a hypothesis anymore. This is a stated roadmap goal. Um, and the policy changes have already started happening to, to back it up. Good deal. Thanks, Keenan. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your feedback and thoughts. Um, let's move on to our final question, and then we can get to the audience. Um, I'll just ask this for Katie and Roger. Um, the pandemic created opportunities and challenges alike, right? So the organizations that thrive, um, for those that could pivot quickly and adopt digital products and processes um, to meet the needs of lenders and borrowers. So um, Katie, to you first, do you agree that this agility will be a critical difference between organizations um, that thrive and those that experience volatility brought on by rapidly shifting market dynamics? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very, very clear um, that we all, everybody involved in the uh, the loan originating process, the appraisal process, right? We want to be able to be, uh, if we determine that we can't do some one particular loan product for a borrower, right? We want to know as quickly as possible if we need to pivot. So that way, again, that borrower can still experience that dream of home ownership. Um, and I think this this moment that we're in right now in the industry, being able to pivot so quickly, being able to have the right technology partners, right? It's going to create that, that fervor with other lenders to encourage their technology providers, to encourage their competitors to adopt this. Um, do I think that, that being able to pivot to the Freddie ACE plus PDR or some of the other appraisal modernization, will that completely take away everything? No, just like Keenan said uh, when he was having his conversation uh, with someone in the industry, right? I don't think traditionals will ever go away. And we're always going to have the, um, you know, the, one, the, the unique one-off traditional appraiser that's going to take a little bit longer than typical, be it if we're uh, in a slowdown right now or not. But I think right now the movement that we're in with modernization, with all of the technology, I think it is going to have us all kind of pushing one another towards being faster, being more agile um, to be able to get not only through this, but to come out of the other side of this volatility successful and being able to, again, serve more borrowers. All right, Roger, we'll, we'll wrap up with you. What are your thoughts and what, what's been your formula for success? Yeah, I was going to say first, I mean, to Katie's point, spot on, right? Keenan both. I mean, full appraisal is always going to have its place in the industry. Um, for me, specifically, I'm, you know, a, a different breed, but I joined Lima when lending was crippled by COVID, right? So companies were laying off and everybody said I was a bit crazy, um, leaving stability in the middle of, you know, I think, Lima went from a hundred million a month to like five million a month, and you know my previous employer was the same, and here I am switching companies. But you know our dream and the vision was aligned, right? And a lot of that vision was the technology pieces and the alternatives that we wanted to put in place and the things in the market that we wanted to introduce. So you know for us, it's it's extremely difficult to say, hey, you know, get some technology and, and you're going to be great because it's not that simple, right? But the technology is a critical, critical piece of the success and, and how you build it and what you do with it, right? But I do and and live by, um, but in terms of my career, the, the simple fact that we can use these alternatives in much, much more places while maintaining and reducing risk associated to these deals, especially in the non-QM world with borrowers the size that we have, right? So the hundred and tenth time that a borrower comes to you for a loan should be a different experience than the first one through five. And if you cannot provide that, right, why why are they coming back for 111? I mean, that's um, that's a lot of pain, right? So. You know, at, at the end of the day, for speaking for us specifically, the success was just that, right? Recognizing the opportunity and then locating the, you know, the right players, right? The right providers and the right technology and just working hard to put it together.
All right, so that takes us to our next and final. So closing thoughts, um, I will just say, I do want to get to the audience. I promise, I have to keep my promise. So can we keep it at about 20 or 30 seconds uh, for each of our panelists? But Keenan, I'll, I'll kick it back to you. Closing thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, the, the biggest takeaway from, from this is, you know, this, this idea of partnership, right? You know, that, that uh, you know, no, no one solution is going to solve all the problems. And so it takes, you know, thoughtful consideration um, from the lender thinking about their ecosystem and how their ecosystem is working together and partnering together to solve problems before they ask for it. And I think that's where the real power is. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of, um, a lot of technology um, uh, opportunities over the past few years of different products, but if they're just in silos where you have to integrate to each one and then figure out what to do, you don't get the, the full benefit out of it. So um, this has been a good good opportunity to explore what can happen when, um, when the ecosystem actually works together to solve problems uh, on behalf of our, our mutual client. All right, anyone hey, else? If not, I'll <laughs> hand it back to Bridgel. <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants to say anything, feel free to jump in. All right, well, so we have a couple minutes left, about six, so we'll get to some questions. Um, we'll start with one to Katie. How does utilizing a service like Value Link streamline, modernize, and create profitability in the appraisal process? Great question. So I think first and foremost, right, it does force you, like we've all mentioned on this uh, on this webinar, right, it does force you to look at your internal processes and determine what is still manual, what is still a little outdated, right, what can you ask your technology providers to automate for you. It does also force you to look at your investors and say, you know, almost respectfully challenge them and say, hey, you're not yet allowing us to utilize uh, this desktop appraisal or you're not yet, your guidelines aren't yet updated to allow us to use, uh, you know, the Freddy ACE plus PDR. Why is that? How do we get to that place, right? Utilizing a service like Value Link where there is so much automation, there is so much malleability, right? It does force you to take a step back and go, okay, we can do so much here. It gets you excited. It makes you want to make things better. And that translates to your downlines, to your other departments, and ultimately to your borrower creating that really fantastic experience. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question, uh, let's see. This one looks like it would be good for Akil. So customer service with a statement or tagline that every company trouts these days. How are your companies doing it differently? Yeah, great question. Um, I think service levels, especially right now, they are under a microscope. Uh, everybody wants to get things done uh, now, right? We are living in the age of Amazon Prime, right? And it's not just the amazing technology that comes, uh, but it also the customer service that comes with the technology. So it's very important to have the SLAs in place. It's very important to not just get a timely answer, but the right answer in time, right? So that is crucial for maintaining um, you know, your borrower experience that is crucial in maintaining your client relationship. So making sure that you have your SLAs defined, making sure that the partners that you're working with, they are hand in hand um, providing you support as well as you move through the journey of the platform usage. I hope I answered that question. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, on this next one, most modernization is driven by data, but data can be difficult in markets without much volume. Uh, this is towards Katie. How do you determine your best AMCs or vendor partners in areas that, may, that you may only do a couple of orders a month and have wildly different data? That is a fantastic question and one that I think we all face no matter what side, if we're GSA, a GSE regulated or in the non-QM space, right? I, I think, again, underlying theme here, right, is technology, right? Having your right technology in place. Um, and when you have that in place, such as, as we do, right, we have Value Link, uh, you're the right technology partner is going to have a very robust uh, reporting environment, they're going to be able to already capture those data points. So when you get that self-reported data from 
those AMCs, even if you're feeding them onesie, twosie orders, you're going to be able to very clearly match up the data points one to one and determine either where your internal process flows have fallen out and therefore impacted that AMC's performance or where there may be other issues that need to be explored with that vendor partner, with that AMC or, or the technology to make sure all three parties come together and get that seamless borrower experience. Thank you. Okay, this next question is open to any panelists. So what do you look for in, tech, in a technology provider, specifically order management platforms? You can raise your hand if you feel like tackling it. Roger, you want to take that one? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, for me personally, it's the, the integrations are big. I mean, God, you could have a call around this question alone probably, but the integrations are critical, right? M ensuring that those integrations fit your needs, right? You, every lender is going to be different regardless of the back end. Um, and then, uh, you know, speak to Akil's point, right? We, we are living in an Amazon Prime market. and. Akil still laughs at me, but even, you know, two years later, I'm still pushing. I want everything in, in 12 minutes too, right? So uh, we want to be the best. Um, but going back to the beginning, confirm, confirm, confirm. Make sure that your provider can provide what they're promising you. And from there, validating that it's the customization actually works, right? But the integrations with your AMCs, your products are critical eliminate the manpower needed, and ultimately hopefully set you up where the majority of your strong appraisals are coming through without a lot of manpower required, right? So hopefully that helps. All right, it looks like we still have a couple questions, but we're going to do our best to either email you directly or back to you after the webinar is over with an answer to those questions. So in the meantime, if you do have a question that you think of after, feel free to email one of these email addresses to one of us. And as a final reminder, this webinar is being recorded and will be sent out to everyone by tomorrow. So thanks everyone for so much for joining. We really appreciate having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.